Well, this is not my normal gear location, but we're kind of using my wife's office as a uh, kind of a, a holding area because I have a lot of shoots the last couple of months and it's on the first floor of the house. She's on maternity leave with our eight week old. So it just kind of makes sense that I can just kind of roll this right out into the garage instead of having to go up and down the stairs. But I've got a shoot today and it's a corporate shoot. It's a job that I've gotten. Uh, this is the second year in a row through an agency. And I got the FX6 here um, about, I don't know, a month or so ago. And I've already done a couple shoots with it. So I've got this Nanook. Is it still, it's still new to me. Nanook, this is a 960. It's big enough so that I can put the, the uh, camera in there pretty much ready to roll. And I use the top part here. It's a double double uh, layered. I had a, a the 950 and it wasn't tall enough. So I returned it and got this one. It's an expensive case. This case is like 400 some dollars, I think. But um, I like it a lot more than the Pelican. But anyway, I took out all of the organization stuff in there and then I can just flip it over top here. And that, that way I've got, I know this cushion is right here, but you know, just why not? And um, keeps things a little more tight. I've got my, I have the map box on there now. I probably won't use that, uh, maybe for B-roll. I've got a, the Shinobi seven inch, the Shinobi smaller one, uh, the regular size. Got my female batteries. I'm using the Tilta cage set up here. This is a Condor blue handle that I put on the side. It mounts right into um, the base plate uh, of the Tilta cage. And I think it's really for shoulder mounts and stuff like that that you hold down in front of you, but it fits perfectly on that rosette and then I can hold it, it'll, it'll move it forward. Uh, whenever I pull the, the monitor out, I'll show it later. And it, I think it'll be great for B-roll. So yeah, just a little more stabilization of the camera. I haven't used it yet, so we'll, today will be the test. Um, for this, it's just interviews today. So I'm just going to have, prob I'll just, I'm, I'm debating on, I got the Rode Wireless Pros, um, the, the ones that just came out here in September. I haven't used them yet uh, on, a, on a shoot, but I'm, I'm thinking of doing that. Normally I do a lav setup, or I'm sorry, uh, overhead um, boom setup. This is my Pelican that I kind of have everything else in. So B cam will be an A7S uh, III right here. And then I've got a Rode NTG5, which I love. Um, that'll be the boom if I decide to go that way. Sometimes, you know, I I, I get on these shoots and it depends on the per. I do a lot of stuff with older folks, like, you know, because the, the company that I'm being um, contracted through they help a lot of older folks and stuff, so we're filming them. And I, you know, some of the, some of the clothes they're wearing. A lady a couple weeks ago was wearing a shirt that I just don't know how I would have lavved that up. Um, so I, I boomed it. But um, anyway, this is my case here with all of my other stuff. This is the Pelican. I got it blocked over there, but it's it's a big, deep Pelican, and I like them both because they're on rollers. I would love to find a way to get everything I need here into there. I just don't think it's going to be possible because um, I cannot put the top layer on there with the, the handle. Because the, taking the handle off is the whole thing. Like, <laughs> if there was a way to use audio on the FX6 without that handle, that would be great. But that's just not how it is, so whatever. And we just got to deal with it. But I'm not going to be taking that handle off and on every time. There's just no way I'm going to do that. So I'll just deal with it the way that it is. So I think I just have to suck it up and do two cases here. Um, I know a lot of people are using the doctor bags and whatnot, and, and that's great. I, I don't know. I just feel like it's such an investment. I want a little bit more of a hard case on my expensive equipment. You know, it's a $6,000 camera and then lens and <laughs> everything everything that goes with it. It's pretty expensive. But um, I got the 24 to 105 on there right now, which I probably will not use for the interview. I'm thinking I, what I usually do is I go 50. I have the 50 1.2 G Master, and then I have the Sony 85 1.8, not the G Master. And recently I got some ND filters and I've always been a variable ND guy, but I, I've just been really noticing the color shift with the variable NDs. Uh, so I'll have my A cam with the the uh, variable ND built in on that the FX6. And then I'll be putting a lens on the uh, A7S III and you know it's just i notice a big color shift whenever i go to color grade so i got the fixed these fixed ones and these are what are the what company i already forgot i think it's knf concepts 
and these are fixed NDs, and these are the magnetic ones, so you don't have to screw them on, on and off. You just screw the magnetic base on, and then you can just pop the uh, different filters on and off. So that's nice. Um, I've used that once so far, and I think it, I've, I've noticed a, a good good change on that because trying to do the color balancing and you know all of the hue shifts and all that kind of stuff just to match cameras it sucks one thing i got i have not used yet for white balance is this thing so if you guys have used this or and you had good or bad success let me know essentially you just put it over the lens do your white balance and you're good to go so this kind of this thing just takes up your whole field of view like you're supposed to with uh whenever you're doing white balance and then uh light is still getting in through these little prisms or whatever so you're going to get an accurate white balance. So like I said, I haven't used it yet. Um, I do have one of those, which I never use that one. I've got the color checker here and then I've got a gray card and whatnot. I'll be honest, white balance is something that I've never really taken the most time to get correct whenever I'm doing these jobs. <laughs> I just, oh, I, I, I for too long, I had the mentality of get it right in post, but that's the wrong. That's because everything I do is I shoot for myself. I'm not sending footage off to anyone. You know, it's just one of those things where I just need to step up my game and take a little bit more time to get that white balance right. I'll just be like, yo, 5600 on this camera, 5600 on that camera. Let's roll. And, you know, it's just not working out the way that I, I, I used to think. So anyway, uh, oh, I, I think I only need this for if I put the Atomos, the Shinobi 7 on the FX6 and then the Shinobi regular on the a7s3 i'll have to use one of those batteries I, i'm really loving having v-mount because everything's powered through the v-mount you don't have to deal with all these little batteries and everything um i think that's pretty much it oh uh side note I, if you don't have one of these if you can ever find one the peter mckinnon uh camera tool is awesome love 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 using this thing I usually put that right in my pocket as soon as i get there um and then as far as lighting and grip and stuff like that, I, in here, in, in this uh, rolling case, which I'm probably not going to take the whole rolling case in because it doesn't fit on the cart because it's too long. I have boom pole. And then I've got, if you've never heard of Strobe Pro, they sell really good light stands. They're heavy. Uh, I've got a 13 and a 16 footer, and these are booming light stands. So as you can see, they can they can boom out. They're just really heavy, and as I've been watching some of you other guys on YouTube and some of the gear, you're not using, I'm using Aperture 120D, 300D. Uh, today I have the, um, I'm forgetting the name of it, but it's the Aperture, it's the Amaran, it's the flat light panel. Um, is it the F? F, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it can do all the RGB colors and everything like that, and it's got a soft box. But, um, and that one's pretty light, but you know, whenever you're using a 300D, you need a kind of a heavy light stand because the the box that you put on the side and then the light itself, it's all made out of metal and it's all heavy. But whenever I get on my rock and roller cart, this thing does not fit. And I have the bag that goes on the edge of it. So I think I'm just going to, you know, throw the light stands that I need in the van and then not uh, take this whole thing. But I don't know yet. We'll see. And then I've got two, my Benro tripods, uh, aperture, light dome. I think it's the light dome too. Um, I don't use that thing all the time, I, 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 but I do like the look of it. it. It gives a nice soft light. It's got the double diffusion and the grid that comes with it. Um, and then I've got a Westcott um, rapid box, which I have a bunch of. I'm also a photographer, so I, I, I try my best to use photo gear and video gear that, that can mix and match as much as possible. So obviously flashes, my strobes can't be used for video gear, but I can use my, I've used my apertures a ton on different video sh or photo shoots and whatnot. So keeping everything Bowen's mount and all that, you know, so being freelancer and whatnot, and as I've, I'm, I'm quite a few years in now, I'm, I started in 2018, it's 2023. I've just learned that gear isn't everything, but gear is also everything. So like, you got to have what you need, like you need the right gear to get the job done, but I don't need as much of it. So I'm trying to get to where I take less stuff. I don't have a grip van or anything like that because I, I still have a nine to five job where I actually also do photo video and I, it's kind of difficult sometimes doing that full time and then also doing this for my own business. So it, it's kind of a lot sometimes, but anyway, I, I've learned that being a solo shooter, running gun kind of shooter, I, I rarely ever have help on a, on a shoot and uh, so I'm doing the audio myself and everything 
it's just nicer to have less gear. So I kind of take what I need instead of take everything. So I don't even know if I'm going to take the 120D today. I'll probably just take the 300. I'm not really sure what the lighting scenario is going to be today. But this is it, and I'm going to go load the van. We got a minivan after we got the kid, and we got a dog and whatnot. So it's nice to have a minivan. And um, I, Normally, I, all this would be going into my Tacoma, but the minivan is just really nice to drive, and everything fits in there perfectly, and it's great to load, unload. So we're going to go do that. I decided to leave the 120D Mark II and the light dome with the other aperture that I've got with the, the large soft box that comes with and the, the light panel and everything and the, uh, the Westcott soft box. I, I have everything I need. I, I'm trying not to, I don't need to bring all this, you know, and then I load it up and I don't use it. So again, if I can't get what I need done with some interviews with two lights, then I don't know what I'm doing. By the way, I picked up this Peak Design tripod it's called a mobile tripod i think and it just attaches magnetically to your phone if you can get it in the right spot and then you've got a nice spot to set up a tripod of your phone if you're deciding to make iphone videos so then it folds up actually you got to fold it up first you gotta fold this fold this and then it goes boom like that and you put it on the back of your phone it was like $75 though. All right, so it's 11.10. I need to leave here by, let's see, I need to leave, I'm going to Daytona, so I need to leave here by about 11.45 in order to get down there and be early. Because whenever it comes to a shoot, that we're supposed to get there at 1.30 and go through a walkthrough and kind of see the, the place and kind of figure out where we want to do the, the, the setup. And you, you never know with traffic or whatever. So I try to give myself at least 15 to 20 minutes ahead. And if you get, or if you get there early, then you get there early. But at least you can, you know, de-stress before you go in and just realize that you got there. Um, instead of having to, am I going to get there? Am I going to get there? And then you have clients waiting on you and that kind of thing. I've had that happen to me once or twice in my life. And it's a terrible feeling because you know you still got to get there. You got to get all your gear in. You got to set up. You got it, and then you're rushing through. And if you forgot to do your menu settings and all that kind of stuff, so it's worth it to firstly do everything the night before as much as you can. I overdo it a little bit, and I'm trying to not do so much. I kind of overthink it a, a little bit, and then um, on the day of, just try and get there early. It's, it's just worth it. And if you're way too early, then go grab something to eat. Go to the convenience store, grab some water, whatever, and always take water with you. Snacks if you can, but always have water. Because whenever you get busy and you're working and everything like that, you very easily will forget to drink water. But it's very important. What is your go-to shoe whenever you know you're going to go do a shoot? I really like wearing these Nike Metcons. They're a few years old. I wear them to the gym. I'm not a big Nike fan anymore. I'm not really a big fan of a lot of the things they support and whatnot these days and how the shoes are made. <laughs> but I didn't know that when I bought these shoes. But I've got a couple pairs, and um, you know the Metcons I always felt were really good. They're great for working out, but I also just feel like they're so comfortable on a longer shoot day, walking to and from the vehicle, that kind of stuff. So, and I don't really want to wear like you know my running shoes. Yeah, I just feel like it's I'm trying to hold off the dad life as much as I can as far as that goes, while already being a dad. So um, I, I wear I wear these these Whoobies a lot. These are an American made company. Uh, made by Army veterans, and um, I, I really like them. They're they're really comfortable and whatnot too. They're just, they're really flat. That's the only thing is they're super flat, um, which I like for working out as well. But when I want just a little bit more cushion, I feel like the Nike Metcons are are great. So these are probably the Metcon. What are these? These are Metcon fives. So I don't even know what which ones are out now. But yeah, super comfortable. It always sucks to get home from a long day and then your feet are just exhausted. All right, ready to roll. Only an hour drive. And I just realized we left the turkey from yesterday. <laughs> Gotta throw that out now. Um, banana and a couple beef sticks. And then I've got my big water. So that should last me the whole time. But like I said, it's only an hour drive. Um, so that means an hour back too. So better to be over-prepared than under-prepared. On the road. Says I should be there at about 12-ish. 12, at close to one o'clock. Heading to Daytona from Jacksonville. Still getting used to this Sienna. Uh, it's a 2022, I think, Sienna. And it's got the adaptive cruise control, which I've never had before. So like, it's keeping me at a certain distance away from the truck in front of me. 
it's uh it's it's kind of nice actually that uh, way you don't have to worry about like well you have it set for 76 as your speed for cruise control and you're just going to keep getting closer to the car in front of you but nope it put me down now i'm at 66 just so that i keep the distance i like that this thing also has the stuff where it doesn't let you go in the in the other lanes like it'll kind of steer you back but i think i have that turned off i didn't really like feeling like the the, the controls of the steering wheel were out of my hands you still have full control i just didn't didn't really care for it i might have it on at a, at a little bit they let you kind of have like certain strength levels of it but yeah but driving this sienna like you just if you don't care about what people think about having a minivan and all that i mean it's awesome all the room and the space that we have in here. I can have my dog, I can have my son and my wife and all of our, our stuff. We're about to go on vacation in a week. It's just great. It, SUVs are so much more expensive. They get way worse gas mileage and you get less room. And this has eight row, eight seating, uh, uh, three rows. It's, it's awesome. One other thing that I really love about this is the uh, Waze on Apple CarPlay. Apple CarPlay has just been an absolute game changer for me, and I gotta get it in my Tacoma. I have a 2017 Tacoma. I've gotta have that installed. But if you're curious what Florida roadways looks like, this is pretty much it anywhere you go in Florida. <laughs> it's just a bunch of trees. Sometimes it's a little bit more wetland looking or whatever, but it's pretty much the same anywhere I've been and I've lived here my entire life. Hey. Hi. Hi. I'm Tracy. Hi, I'm Evelyn. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. You're a little early. I am a little early. Sorry about that. I've come from Jacksonville. I was just like uh, riding up here and I was like, well, it better be early than late. Okay. You never know if this going to be an accident or something. True. Do you want to uh, get a tour? Or yeah, I'd love to see kind of some of the areas that we have to work with. Hello. I'm Tracy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Tracy. You walk Are we around. kind of a game for anywhere or? Yeah. Or? Okay. Okay. Put this up next. This is a big large conference room. Okay. Oh, wow. Here, um, oh, that's nice. I mean, you can use it to see any props or things for a backdrop. Is it okay to move tables and chairs in here? Tables, chairs, okay. you can move some plants. We have some, you know. I'm just thinking for sound wise, it might be better to not be out here, but to be in okay. an enclosed room. But we can use some, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Some, um, oh, that's great. Uh, I, I would say in here, it would be our yeah. spot. Yeah, we can like put the plant in the corner over there or something like that and All right, so this is the workspace we've got to work in it's a nice big room. I like big spaces So I'm thinking Main shot be there put some greenery in the background move all these tables and chairs B cam will be Shooting that way. We'll see. We'll see and these chairs are nice and have low backs on them and They can sit in those. I think that's good all right, time to unload the van. All right, so let's do it. Yeah, this tripod's pretty cool. Just right on the back of my phone and boom, tripod for my phone. That's awesome. And I'm getting the new iPhone on Friday, the 15 Pro, so hopefully the front camera is even better. First thing I always do, always pack your cart last so that it's the first thing you can get. When I first came in, I set myself a path for my cart to get in. <laughs> so, I've done this one too many times now. All right, let's do it. You can see how nice this file like these rapid boxes.
This is the Amaran light. This is a, if you guys haven't seen this thing, it's about a thousand, but it's an F22C. It's a color light panel. It's that flat. And then it's got its own uh, box and diffusion. I'll show you setting that up. And then you're familiar with the 300C or 300D. All right, so next what I like to do is go ahead and get the sticks down and start seeing kind of what my what we're looking like here. I gotta go get that plant still. And I'm gonna do my best to avoid these two uh, electrical cables. But um, yeah, let's see what, what we can do here. But I like to go ahead and get everything kind of set up and that way we can move things around before we start doing lighting and all that. This is how I have the FX6 head set up here. So I can just take this condor blue, it's got this little lever right there so I can move that forward and then move that down. I think I have it, I don't have it far enough forward. I think I have it like right there. And that way when I'm doing B-roll, I haven't used this yet, but when I'm doing B-roll, I have a nice grip on this side instead of just right here. Cause also I have a really bad habit of changing my zoom whenever I'm filming B-roll and stuff. And I kick myself every time I'm editing. So um, this should help me just kind of set, set it with my fingers right there and then be done and then just film. So yeah, and I don't need this map box on here. Actually not too heavy right now. I mean, I don't have a V-mount on there, but I got these V-mount, the small rig V-mounts. I got a 99 and a 155. I like them so far. They've got a lot of uh, plug-in points. You charge it USB-C, they charge really fast. And then on the top of this, I have a small rig, uh, what is a quarter inch to NATO on the top of that. So I, on my Shinobi seven inch, I have a NATO. And then on the small Shinobi, I have a NATO. So depending on what I want to do, all I got to do is slap it on the camera. I'm going to go with the big boy on here. All I got to do is put it on there, tighten it down and we're good to go. And this, this, uh, this magic arm is super light, which I love. I'll plug in the HDMI. Plug in the power. Where is it? There you are. Uh, the Shinobi 7 inch has its own plug in spot, so I don't have to use a dummy battery, which is awesome. Here's a little closer look. So, NATO clamp on the magic arm right there. And then this Shinobi 7 inch has its own DC in right there. So I don't have to put a dummy battery on it. What position did you have when you first started with the agency? And tell me about that time in your life. The first position I held here. Community caring. And she's always sure, whatever you want. Fine with me. And, and she's willing to try anything. She's doing a great job of faking it. She's like, this oh, I'm getting rusty now because I'm retired. <laughs> no, I did this for you. Let me tell you. All right. As much as I love using primes, I think on this one I'm using the 51.2 G Master, um, it's hard to remember sometimes to do wide, medium, and tights for your B-roll. So, you know, if you're using a variable zoom, it's very easy to stay in the same spot and get wide, medium, and tights. But with a prime, you gotta move your feet. So um, you gotta always gotta be thinking of the edit whenever you're doing the B-roll, and that way you, you know you're gonna have options to use for the final outcome. All right, shoot over. Packing up. It went well. I'll talk about it more in a minute. Just got back in the car. Forgot my water in the car the whole time. And now my water's hot. <laughs> uh, um, made a couple mistakes on this shoot. Uh, I'm still getting used to the FX6 and learning how to use it. I've, I've used the A7S3, A7 IV. Sorry if the wind is too loud. AC. And I'm super used to those, but I'm still only like a month into the FX6. And whenever you're shooting S-Log3 on the FX6 uh, in Cine EI, I ha you're supposed to more or less be around Zebra 95. 
And on the little waveform at the bottom, you have your two lines, zebra one, zebra two. I was exposing for zebra one, forgetting that I needed to go up to 95% zebra. So I essentially, I underexposed the whole thing. And I'm hoping that I was shooting an XAVCL um, S log three. So I'm hoping I've got enough latitude to make it okay. It looked okay on the monitor, but as we were shooting and we were already like five minutes in. So I, it's just a reminder for me and anyone watching, just slow down. Uh, everyone around you might be okay, let's get going, let's go. But I always do better whenever I just slow down, focus on what I need to do and not miss important stuff like that. So I think it'll be fine in this case, but you know, my perfectionism and all that, I just, I'm trying to work on that. So that's why I didn't just stop everything and um, say, sorry guys, we got to restart. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm hoping everything will be okay. And you know, we'll move forward. I'm still struggling a little bit with a7S III and the FX6 as an A cam, B cam, because A7S III, I have to put an ND on there. And as I said earlier, I don't use variables anymore. So I have to, the lowest fixed ND that I have for this uh, KNF Concepts magnetic system is an ND8. And I needed an ND4 today. So, and I can't seem to find ND4s by themselves. Um, so I had to put an ND8 on there and then up the ISO. So I, I, it should be okay. Um, and also the LUT on both was having her clothes, she was wearing like a, I think it was a green top and, and the LUT was making it blue. But I'm hoping that's just like a LUT thing that was that one of the, you know, the, the baked in S709 LUTs there. So maybe I can fix that in post. Thankfully, I do have a lot of confidence in myself in editing, but I always want to fix it in pre and not in post. Uh, wherever possible, but just upset with myself on those kind of things. But you know what? It is what it is. You're not going to hit them all out of the park. You're not making, um, you know, a Christopher Nolan film every time you're shooting. So um, it is what it is. And as long as the client doesn't notice, that's really all that matters. And not that I'm ever striving for mediocrity, but um, it's just something that, y you know, you just got to take your lick and move on. Always nice after a long drive and shooting and you know, even though it was a simple shoot, it's still a lot of thinking, it's a lot of gear, it's a lot of, you know, talking and figuring things out and a lot of brain power, but it's always fun to come home to this guy. He's eight weeks old tomorrow. Getting big. Thought I'd show you guys the backup process. So um, I, as soon as I get home, you know, at least at some point, I plug in the SD cards and I create my file structure here. So I've got a folder that's, you know, a hard drive that's just holding the actual fi physical files um, that I am not having in the actual editing project. But so I have the project name and then um, the individual projects inside of that project. And then, so like today's was the DPW award. And then this was BCAM. And then I know the FX6 is ACAM. So it's transferring everything over now. So pretty simple, keep it easy, and then I will import directly into Final Cut, and I have everything there. So that way it's already in two, two different places um, as soon as I get home. And I have the, the SD card that I edited, I shot on. The second card is just still in the camera, so it's always still there as well. So I've got it in a few places at once. All right, so this might be a little much for the scope of these kinds of videos, but this is how I do a quick color grade. So we have our color checker here and I just draw, do a draw mask on the color checker. And then I've got my scopes over here and then we go to hue and saturation curves. And then we put a, a dot on every single color. And then every time I move one of these up and down, you can see right here, you see how it's moving the yellow right there. So we want it about halfway from the middle to the yellow right there. And then we do the same thing on the top side. So I'm going to put a dot for each one of these under hue versus hue. The bottom one's hue versus saturation. This is hue versus hue. And then now if we move the yellow, it's going to move it up and down. So we want it about 50% of the way towards the yellow. And then we want this to not be over here, to be over here. So after you do every single one, you just kind of reevaluate and keep tweaking until it's all done. And then after you take whenever you, I'm not done, obviously, but whenever you take your draw mask off, you're color corrected for the color checker. And then uh, I, I use the, I'll usually draw, move the draw mask over as well for the uh, exposure.